Hey guys, so in this video I will show you how to easily configure your game server using a dedicated server manager. And a dedicated server manager is basically used because it makes uh, life of managing game servers a lot easier. For example, we can see the stats information about the server. We can also see the graphs of the resource usage, uh, the CPU usage, the RAM, and we can filter by, by any intervals, as you can see in the list. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so in order to use HaroHost, we will first need to download it. So click on your favorite browser, then go to HaroHost.com. Click here the download button and scroll down below and click download HaroHost GSM. Now open up the folder where it's downloaded and double click the installer. A shortcut will appear in the desktop. Double click it and you will be greeted with an introduction screen, the terms and conditions screen, and some of the features screen, and then a roadmap. Now in order to use it you will need to log in. Currently only Patreon is implemented as a login method. So just click the login with Patreon button. Alternatively, you can select this and the QR code will be generated like this and you can log in with your phone. However, I will log in with my browser. Since I'm already logged into the website, I just need to accept the usage of the app. So I will press allow. Okay, now we will install a game server. This time it will be Palworld. So I just click the add button. Now I will click the create button and press select. I will select Palworld. Then I will choose the directory. So I want to use it the new installation default directory. So I will leave this as is and press confirm. Now I want to select install after creating. This way, after I press the complete button, it will start the installation automatically. Press the complete button. And now let's just wait for the installation to complete. If we click on this, we can see the installation progress. Now after the installation has completed, just wait a bit because it will do a test uh, run. So the manager tried to do a test run and saw that some software is missing to successfully run the server. We need to install it, so just click yes. Now that that's complete, another pop-up will be shown because Palworld also needs Microsoft Visual C++ 2015-2022 installed. So we will just install it. Now we will just wait uh, till the server shutdowns itself. Uh, the manager starts the server because Sometimes the 
some servers need to start for the first time to generate uh, initial configuration files. The server has been successfully installed. So Haruhas has basically two configuration modes. One is the manual config, where the user has to set up the correct settings themselves and then tell Haruhas how to connect to it for Haruhas to properly work with the server. And then the other way is to use the automatic configuration. All right, so let's start with the auto config section. Uh, basically, it has three sections. One is for the auto configuration, whether to toggle it on or off. Then we have the network settings. The network settings automatically assign the parts for the game server, which we can see here. And uh, it also tells us which parts will need to be port forwarded in your router configuration, which will we get on to later on. And the last section is the server configuration uh, cards. So if I click on this card, I can see that I already have edited the configuration settings for this server. By using a customized UI, Haruhas allows you to easily filter specific server settings by either tags, like here, where we can select, for example, breeding and modify the egg hatch time, or uh, we can just type in uh, the setting property we want to have, like for example, how much an item should wait. We can reduce each item's weight multiplier. So if we set to zero, it's zero. And basically we can also edit the value itself by just pressing this. And then you have to press the save button. So it's really easy to edit the server configuration settings like that. Now that we are familiar with the automatic and manual configuration, let's get over to what actually needs to be done for the server to be visible on the internet. So before you start your server, go to the settings page and make sure the game power forwarding section contains the correct port range that Haruhas will use to assign to your servers. You can manually edit the range and then just press the save button. For example, if I move this, it says that one game server will be affected. Now, after I made the change or if I'm using the app the first time, I will have to click the check firewall status. It will actually show that the firewall rules have not been set up and uh, the game server will be blocked by your computer. So we will just press this fix all issues button. And now it has applied uh, the required rules to make sure this port range is not blocked by the computer. Now let's go to the game servers itself, click view, auto config and go to the network configuration settings. Be sure to select uh, the correct network and then we can check here the parts that are in use. However, I missed one more step so I will go back to the settings. And here we also need to select the network and it shows us the gateway address. If that doesn't work for you, you will need to check your router manual. But basically when you click this, you will need to connect to your router and find a similar page that is called port forwarding, uh, where you will be able to set up port forwarding rules. So now that I have connected to the router, I will just go to the game server, view auto config, and then just copy this value by clicking the copy button. And just uh, in the port range, I will just insert it and it's in insert it here. Now I will also need to type in the IP address. So it's 192.168.147. And that is basically this address here. Usually you can leave this source IP address optional, uh, empty, uh, or it set the global IP address, but it should work with empty. So now I will just name this uh, rule. As a last step, make sure to change the protocol to UDP or TCP UDP, because game servers on the game server part usually use most of the times the UDP protocol. By using TCP UDP, we will make sure both protocols are available. And then press the add rule button. And now if we check, the rule has been added. 
So now after the rule has been applied, uh, the server in auto config mode should work and we should be able to connect to, to our game servers. Now you might be thinking that I didn't include the query part, but actually this one doesn't need to be included, it's a mistake. Okay, so let's start the server. Let's wait until the server shows online. We can also check the console. Alright, since now it is showing online, we should try and connect to the server. Let's do that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is go to the details section and just copy the server name. And now I will launch the game and just connect to the server by using the name. Alright, so I press join multiplayer. Uh, there should be a warning popping up. Select community servers. Paste in the name, press search, then press proceed. And confirm start game, yes. Yeah, and now we are in the game. Right, so now that we have connected to the server, we can go click the details button. Oops, I meant the graphs. And here we can see the player uh, count status. So this is me connecting, then I disconnected. And then I reconnected to make the video. And this is the RAM usage over time. This is the CPU usage, which is pretty low. So we can also do compare it to 6 hours. Alright guys, so if for some reason uh, your game server is still unable to connect, you can check if your game server app is blocked. And you can do this by going to the firewall, advanced settings. And then you can go check the inbound rules. And you can see here is the Palward server exe and it's blocked. So I can either remove this manually or I can choose to go to the settings and uh, here is a button called unblock game servers. So it will automatically remove all blocking rules for all existing game servers in the list. So let's do that. Okay, now it removed the rules and we can check it. So right now it exists, but if I do this and refresh it, uh, the rule isn't present anymore. This shall solve an issue when uh, uh, a game server is explicitly blocked and you cannot connect to it. All right, so now that uh, we have successfully connected and we uh, already have players, uh, let's look up some more features. One of the features is webhooks. You can basically set up a webhook when a player joins or leaves the server. You can choose here based on the templates and it will even display color if you're using a computer that doesn't work on mobile. Uh, you can even use emojis or whatever this is. Yeah. And then you can change the text for join it for left. You can use uh, the bot name URL. You can select the icon for when a player leaves for when a player joins. And then you can also, when you create the webhook, you can just press these buttons to test how it looks like. And the last thing that I want to show you is the tasks button. So basically by default, if the server crashes, it will start up again. This is an in horror host, but we also have the advanced tasks. So we can click here at tasks and for example, 
uh, here we select all the game servers then we can select what we want to do so let's say i want a task by time interval every 15 seconds and then i can add actions so i want it to show a message hello this is a test message then i press next uh, then i name my task my task great now it's active you can also disable it here so if i now go back to the server you can see that the message appeared so now it will show up every 15 seconds this is really useful if you want like to share your discord server 